Let me know you, Julia. Uh, whenever you want. Um, okay, we can start. Uh, let me. Um, okay, um, you can see this presentation, right? I'm not yeah. looking at you, so Julia. Um, okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Raul Laprida. I'm part of the research and innovation team. Uh, here at uh, Buenos Aires. Um, today, we're going. I'm going to talk about uh, this new concept of this uh, formerly called uh, gasless, now called uh, sponsor transactions, and more specifically about our solution, which is called uh, Reef Melody. The agenda is very simple. This is not a technical. Uh, uh, a meeting. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk about some technical stuff, but it's not uh, very technical. We are going to cover the three most basic concepts, which is the reason why we need uh, this new technology, uh, what is it, what's the concept behind it, and how is it made, or a brief description of how it works but not getting into much detail. The idea uh, that I have for this uh, meeting is that you understand the reason through the story that I'm going to tell you and that you get hooked and hopefully you want to participate in our next uh, presentation where we will discuss in excruciating detail and the solution that uh, we created here at IOB. So we are going to start with the why instead of the what because I want you to understand the reason and I'm going to present you with the story. The story is very simple. It has two main characters that probably you know, Alice and Bob uh, is widely used in the cryptographical uh, stories. And here they are two actors and they are going to start participating in a new movie made by a major streaming company. And this company is going to pay uh, to them using a stable token, which happens to live in the RSK network, uh, which, as you know, is the most secure uh, smart contract platforms uh, currently available. And we have two separate profiles. We have Bob, uh, who is an avid Bitcoiner. So he calls himself a Bitcoiner. He uses Bitcoin a lot. A lot. He uses it to, to pay for stuff. Some he holds some, but he actually uses Bitcoin because he he tends to get paid in Bitcoin, so he uses it for his daily expenses. And on the other hand, we have Alice, who is more on the uh, smart contract Ethereum band, so she's quite confident uh, with DeFi and using all these uh, new smart contract platforms. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, Bob might think it is the same. Um, uh, Alice is thinking otherwise. So let's see how the story evolves. So it comes the first payment day. So they are getting a monthly payment. Um, the idea that uh, Bob and also Alice have is to, uh, the same that we, that we all do, is installing a, a wallet application. It could be the ones that we know, Defiant, or web extensions like uh, Nifty, Metamask, or the R Wallet. And what they are going to do, most likely, is to first, it seems it, this is their salary. They need to pay the daily expenses, and they live in a certain country that use fiat currency. Probably they need to exchange to cash out some of those tokens and exchange them to the, uh, the fiat currency of the country. And maybe they are going to. Uh, buy other exchange the, their tokens with other tokens that live in another blockchain, for example, DAI, that lives in uh, Ethereum, and maybe some more volatile cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. Um, perhaps you send all the DeFi solutions that we have so far um, that we've seen in previous uh, presentations uh, before. Uh, but in the case of Bob, he being an avid Bitcoin user, uh, when he starts using MetaMask, in this case, uh, he finds out that he needs to put uh, a gas price in another currency, not the, the tokens that he received as payment. He needs to use RBTC, which is the smart Bitcoin that is the native cryptocurrency of the blockchain he's using. So he's kind of puzzled. Okay, this is not the same that I, I'm used to. 
I, I, I honestly don't know what I'm uh, using right now. So I, I went uh, far ahead and thought that I was going to use the same thing that I was used to, but it's not the case. So Bob needs to start studying a bit. So he needs to comprehend uh, the new smart uh, contract platform uh, ecosystem. And he, he does. He uh, starts experimenting and using all the capabilities that the wallets provide or the services provide. So swapping, cashing out, uh, doing coin switch, which is this decentralized exchange, uh, st uh, uh, things that you can do. So he's very hooked. but. Since he's not a seasoned uh, smart contract platform user, he soon realized that he's out of RBTC. He submitted a transaction, and the transaction is cannot be submitted because he just ran out of gas, and he didn't realize that. But since uh, this is a problem, but the main problem is that he doesn't want to have uh, RBTC, which is a a uh, very fluctuating uh, currency. It's the same price as Bitcoin. As, as you know, you buy today and tomorrow might uh, be uh, half the value or double the value. And he, he doesn't want to hold it. He, he just wants RBTC uh, to use it to pay for gas. So for him, it's, it's cumbersome. So it's not a good feature having to pay the transaction with another currency, which is not the one that he's been paid with. In the meantime, we have another completely user profile is uh, Alice. She being a, she's a Ethereum compatible uh, ecosystem uh, user. So she's comfortable uh, by uh, holding RBTC. Actually, she, uh, her uh, risky savings, let's say, are in RBTC. So she's comfortable uh, just buying RBTC and holding them. And when she needs to submit a transaction because she wants to do something in the blockchain, she just uses one part of uh, her stuff, uh, her stash, uh, to pay for the transaction. So it's not a problem. Uh, this new employer to her, she is just comfortable with uh, paying with RBTC. Uh, Bob uh, is not very comfortable in exactly in a problem because the next uh, payment day comes, and still feeling that it's too cumbersome, he needs to buy RBTC because he has to uh, uh, use the, the money for, for living, but uh, and he needs to buy a BTC to, to pay for the transaction, but he's in a problem. He cannot use uh, the tokens that he received, the tokens that live in RSK, because he doesn't have uh, RBTC in RSK, and he cannot buy RBTC, because in order to buy RBTC with the money that you have in uh, RSK, in tokens, you need to pay the transaction with uh, RBTC. So it's a chicken and egg problem. How do I get RBTC? If I need RBTC to get RBTC, I should have saved some RBTC in the, before so I could actually get some. And the other solution that he has, which is still cumbersome, is to go and, uh, outside RSK and get RBTC from other places. For example, on exchange, he could use, uh, I don't know, Bitfinex, for example, and use uh, US dollars or maybe Bitcoin and exchange those uh, for uh, RBTC. So he would get in, uh, he would use it as a method of payment another blockchain uh, because he doesn't have uh, a method to pay for the gas in RSK. So he's in the uncomfortable solution, uh, uh, conundrum of having to ask Alice, who is the other person that he knows that owns RBTC, if she could let him some RBTC. And as you know, there are endless possibilities. Alice could agree or Alice could not. And let's say Alice agrees uh, uh, to pay, uh, to lend him uh, RBTC. Uh, and he does this same pattern over and over again. Uh, but it comes a time in the near future that Alice uh, denies this request. Uh, it might be because she is not a uh, fan of the idea of keeping this behavior from him, or maybe because as in display here, she found an alternative solution that is better, actually for both. Uh, she finds out that the token they are being paid with has a promotion with uh, what she called uh, a sponsor. So she uh, advises Bob to use sponsor transactions. And if they do, they could get a discount of this uh, fee that you need to pay in order to submit a transaction. So it would be actually beneficial not just for Bob, but for Alice, 
to actually use this sponsor and submit transactions using this new uh, sponsor way. So, um, so far, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, don't interrupt the story, but you can ask them uh, in the chat and I will read them uh, in the end. Um, so now we just saw uh, the reason why uh, this uh, uh, sponsor transactions would be beneficial, especially for Bob. Um, in this case, uh, for both, because they have a, a, an actual incentive for using this new way of submitting transactions. Um, so what is it? What is a sponsor transaction? Uh, as the name says, uh, you are using a sponsor to actually uh, pay the gas of the transaction. Uh, if you don't know what gas is, uh, when you submit a transaction in a distributed uh, system as, such as blockchain, and there are machines that need to compute the, the code that you're calling, and that compute has a cost. Uh, the unit cost per transaction is measured uh, with this gas, uh, so you expend X amount of gas for executing some complex uh, transaction in the blockchain, and you associate a price for that unit of gas. And the multiplication of the gas used uh, with the gas price is the amount of, uh, or is the cost of the transaction that you are submitting. The idea is that uh, the cost of that transaction can be sponsored by uh, an entity in this case, let's call it. And the reasons why uh, would be specific for that uh, sponsor, it could be because he's trying to increase adoption of uh, a tool, increase the uh, traffic in a contract. Um, and we'll see some examples, but the idea, uh, uh, the reason behind uh, the sponsor uh, sponsoring your transaction is a completely uh, economic or, or marketing wise. So it has a purpose. Um, what are the benefits for Bob? Well, there are many benefits. First of all, the transaction might be free if, if the sponsor has enough uh, reasons uh, for subsidizing your transaction, they might be free. So you could submit free transactions in the blockchain. For example, an analogy would be, uh, at least here in Argentina, when you are using uh, cell phone companies, uh, you might be tempted to change to another company because they would uh, give you unlimited WhatsApp uh, data or uh, unlimited uh, uh, calls to another phone, etc. So they have the incentive uh, of uh, getting that user base and they give you that, uh, that uh, incentive to you uh, to switch to that company. So your transactions might be free uh, the, the most direct uh, benefit that Bob could have is using uh, tokens instead of native cryptocurrency to pay for the transactions that he wants to submit, which is actually the problem that he's having right now. And another third possibility is having discounts. Uh, uh, an example could be uh, you have a special token or a special contract that someone wants to promote. So they could uh, be the sponsor or they could uh, get in touch with the sponsor and ask them to uh, get a discount in the cost of submitting a transaction to that specific contract, maybe in a Black Friday or whatever. So if you have, for, exa for example, you have competing marketplaces and you want to promote one marketplace over the other, uh, the owner of that marketplace, if he has an owner, could uh, promote uh, it by having discounts in the cost of submitting transactions to that marketplace. That would be a scenario. Um, in our story, we are going to uh, be narrowing down the possibility of sponsors, and we are going to talk about this Defiant application. So the rationale be behind uh, Defiant would be uh, uh, users uh, uh, using uh, their application, using, uh, so gaining user adoption. Um, and the way they're going to do that is, first of all, uh, reducing the cost of submitting transactions and maybe give you free transactions uh, once you uh, create your, 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 your account. Um, perhaps uh, letting you use any token to pay for uh, transactions, not just one or two tokens, maybe let, let give you the possibility, maybe they have a, a partnership, I don't know, with our dog, for example. So they will get give you, I don't know, 10 transactions free of charge if you pay them with our dog. Or maybe in free of charge, that will, will make sense, but uh, maybe 60% uh, or, or and, uh, free, and uh, maybe five free transactions per month. 
this will be our sponsor of today. And in this case, if you please remember, it would be Patrick. He is the sponsor. He is representing Defiant. And Bob would be the user. That's why he has an, the application in his cell phone. Um, so right now we presented the what. So what is uh, this sponsor transaction? Who is behind it? We have a sponsor. We have a, somehow a way of sponsoring transactions and submitting it to the blockchain. OK, but how does it work? Uh, what are the solutions uh, currently available for this? And uh, remember, this is just an introduction. I don't want to uh, make this uh, uh, longer than it needs to be. Uh, right now, for sponsoring transactions, we have uh, two main uh, solutions. Um, uh, we have a gas station network. This is the solution that we initially uh, were uh, basing on. Uh, as the name implies, it is a network. In this case, it would be of sponsors. And the user can submit transactions through the, these sponsors. And it's basically the same as uh, our solution. Uh, gas station network is, again, it's also an enveloping solution. The, the name is uh, a synonym of uh, the sponsor transaction. It's the way it works. And um, the gas station network is just an, uh, another solution that does the same as free from developing. Uh, they live in Ethereum, so they don't live in our escape. But we, a uh, research team, ported the solution. So it could be also used in RSK if uh, if people want to, they it can live there too. And we have the Reef Enveloping as another solution. As I mentioned, it uh, uh, was born as, a, a, let's call it a fork of a GSM, but it rapidly evolved uh, until, point, until a point that is, it has nothing uh, less, uh, it has nothing uh, compared to GSM, it's a separate product. It has very, very few uh, things that overlap, and it became a whole different product. That's why I want to uh, separate them uh, as two separate uh, solutions. And in this meeting, we are going to explain a little bit how enveloping works. Brief enveloping is the name of the product. Um, we are going to be specifying uh, uh, the differences. And I'm going to let you know when there is a difference uh, between GSN and enveloping. Sometimes there are coincidences, and I'm going to try to uh, let you know when that happens. Uh, first of all, I want to let you know, probably you know how a, a transaction is submitted to the blockchain. This is uh, common knowledge. You have a wallet. You create a payload. And you specifically uh, mention the contract that you want to call and the amount of uh, native cryptocurrency that you want to send, if you want to send value, that's optional. Uh, you need to specify the maximum amount of gas that you're willing to spend when calling that contract, and the gas price you are willing to, to, to use uh, for that unit. And you uh, have to use the native cryptocurrency to, uh, uh, to pay for the transaction. And you somehow, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how, you submit it to the blockchain. It could be through your own node, through a, a, a node as a service, or maybe a public node, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. It gets submitted to the blockchain. The transaction that you sign, you sign the payload, and that an altered uh, payload gets signed, uh, sent to the blockchain. So what's the difference with this uh, new uh, way of a uh, transaction that gets uh, enveloped? So the name, as the name suggests, uh, suggests it's kind of the same, but instead of you signing the payload of a blockchain transaction, a raw blockchain transaction, you uh, sign a transaction request. So you have kind of the same fields that before. You have the from, you have the to, you have uh, the value that you want to send. But when it comes to gas price and gas, uh, gas limit, etc., that is where it differs. And I'm, I'm not going to get into detail of the fields, but I'm going to point out that you have some special fields that are very important. And that, that is the method of payment, how you're going to pay for the transaction. And it's going to be a token, an ERC20 token. It could be any token that uh, the sponsor uh, accepts. Remember, you are going to negotiate with a sponsor. In this case, it's going to be defiant who is putting one of these servers uh, to act as a sponsor. And you're going to define then the token, the amount of uh, tokens that you're going to pay for this transaction, and who is the recipient of that uh, uh, of those tokens. And then you're going to sign that, uh, that request, and you're going to send it uh, to, uh, to your sponsor. 
this is a negotiation that is going to be solved by the application that you're using. And in this case of the Defiant app, you are not going to have to uh, be bothered with all this complexity. You are just going to see a form probably, and you're just going to sign it, and that uh, you're going to send that uh, to to through your application. And the sponsor, what it's going to do, is going to grab that and alter request, just the same as before, but in this case, it's not a raw transaction, and it's going to put it in an envelope. Remember, this this, this uh, letter has a stamp that says how it's going to how it is going to be paid in tokens. So he puts that in an envelope and stamps it with a, a seal that is paid with RBTC, which is the native token of the blockchain, and is the method of payment of for the miners. So if we look at the analogy, it's kind of the same flow. You create a, a, re a request instead of a raw transaction, and it is get enveloped and sent to the blockchain through a node, just as before, or through a node as a service, your own node, etc. It doesn't matter, it's the same uh, process. It is a, a transaction itself, the envelope. And if we get into a little more detail how it works, uh, you will see that Patrick, because this is the sponsor that Bob chose to use, Bob could use any other kind of sponsor. This is a network of, of sponsors, and no one has a monopoly over any user. So uh, uh, even though uh, Bob is using Defiant, uh, an account created with Defiant, he can use any other sponsor that he wants. And the reason might be because they have a, a better promotion, they are giving free transactions, they are faster, they are more reliable because of X, Y reason, etc. He's not uh, bound to any sponsor. In this case, he uses Defiant uh, sponsor because uh, it, it, it is giving a promotion this month, so he's using those uh, promotions. And he just uh, creates the, the, the request. The server, it is a web server that's connecting to the application, uh, creates the envelope, and submits it to the blockchain. So I don't know if you noticed, but uh, here there are some questions that Bob starts to, answer, uh, to ask. So, okay, if I'm not submitting the transaction, and is Patrick the one who's submitting the transaction? Who is the caller of the transaction? For example, if I'm, if I'm calling a gambling contract that gives a price uh, if you uh, guess some number, and I'm sending you a request with the number, and Patrick, uh, I'm sending it to Patrick, who is the sponsor, and Patrick is the one that is submitting the transaction. Who is getting the price? Is Patrick getting the price? Is it uh, Bob getting the price? So uh, that's the question that Bob uh, is not understanding because he, he hasn't, doesn't have the knowledge uh, of how this uh, works. Um, the reason why this works, and the answer is yes, Bob gets the price, it's because we need to introduce a new concept. And it, that is the smart wallet. I don't know, if maybe you heard of it, uh, maybe not. Uh, it's a very simple concept. A smart wallet is an account. Remember when you get a wallet, you create accounts. What is an account? You have an address, a 20 byte uh, uh, string, and that is your, your address. And when you need to get paid, you usually share that address with other people and they pay uh, to that address and you, are the owner of the cryptographic material that lets you prove that you are the owner of that address and lets you sign transactions, et cetera. And that's the way a blockchain works. And this is exactly the same, but it is a smart contract. And it has smart capabilities. It has a associated code behind. And you are the owner of that smart contract just as you are the owner of your private key. That is the your external account contract, uh, sorry, account externally own account of, for example, in Ethereum or RSK, that is your address and private key. So you are the owner of that smart wallet that is associated just to your account. So you cannot change owner or, or be declined by someone else, uh, an authority, no. It, it, it is your, it's another kind of account that you have that is associated, associated with your uh, externally owned account. It has no cost, just like when you get uh, an address, you can do it offline, you can just calculate it, and you can get as many as you want. And they are free, and you can share them to people so they pay you to that address, just like you do with a normal uh, account. Um, um, 
you can uh, use it for enveloping, of course, so uh, relaying transactions through this sponsor, but you can also also use it uh, for calling directly contracts uh, using, uh, again, native cryptocurrency. So you can you have the duality of, uh, of using it through the enveloping process or using it directly. It's another account that you have, but it's, it's smart. It has associated code. And if you want, you can st uh, stop using uh, any time. So if you, for example, if Bob uh, feels comfortable again uh, by paying with RBTC and wants to stop using this kind of account, he can. And he can uh, re uh, stop using that account, move all the funds that might have in this account to his uh, normal account, and that would work. Uh, because uh, maybe I haven't mentioned, but those these are different addresses you have. Uh, your initial uh, RSK account, which is the normal account, and you create a smart wallets where that uh, original account is the owner of. Um, so th th they are different addresses. And uh, so if you send uh, money to your normal account, you are not going to be the owner in the smart wallet account. For example, if you call a contract a token, the token doesn't know who is calling uh, if you are the owner of a smart wallet because the, the token doesn't know the existence of a smart wallet. So it knows the existence of uh, an account. So uh, it depends on which uh, way you call it that uh, the token will be will see uh, the funds. And this is a problem. Maybe uh, you uh, might see it or not. That Bob is still going to have. I'm not going to give you the problem nor the solution, uh, but I will uh, explain it in the next meeting. So if you maybe review the presentation and maybe this. Uh, discover what the problem uh, and that Bob has with his locked account uh, tokens, uh, let me know and I'll give you the answer if you, uh, if you got it right. Um, so let's, let's uh, uh, get into a little bit more of detail what happens after the request gets to the server, uh, to the sponsor. So Bob sent the transaction request information with the promise of payment in, 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 in a token. Um, uh, Patrick puts that in an envelope and sends it uh, to the blockchain. Eventually, not directly, but eventually, that envelope gets to the smart wallet of Bob. The, the logic that this smart wallet uh, has is going to verify that the signature of the request uh, was uh, actually done by Bob because Bob is the owner of the smart wallet. And if that's the case, the smart wallet is going to call the destination contract. And that's the reason why um, Bob is going to get the funds in the smart wallet if, if he wins the, the gamble. And also, that's the reason why in a previous slide, I said that the smart wallets uh, are free to create, but uh, uh, initially. Why is that? Because as you can see here, uh, when you want to use the smart wallet, you actually need to deploy it. It, it has to be deployed because you are calling your smart wallet. But uh, you might not be charged because one of the incentives of the sponsors is uh, for you to adopt their application. So they might subsidize the creation of the smart wallet. That is going to be the most likely case. And if it is not the case, you can always uh, pay it with tokens, the creation of your smart wallet. And you might think, OK, if I, in order to, to interact with contracts, I need to have a deployed smart wallet. How am I going to pay with tokens the creation of my, my, my smart wallet? It is a, the chicken and egg problem. How, how could that happen? Well, that is a solution that we designed uh, for Reef Enveloping, and we can explain it uh, later in another meeting how uh, we made that possible. But you can actually use Enveloping before uh, having the smart wallet created and still get the smart wallet created. Um, so basically, what is uh, that both can do uh, with this uh, new uh, sponsor transaction features. Well, he can now uh, go to the application. The application has an extension that supports uh, enveloping. So he can create a smart wallet address. The, the owner of this smart wallet is going to be the normal account that he had in his wallet. Uh, he can share that address to his employer. The employer is going to start paying to Bob in that new address. Um, if he wants to use the funds in that uh, in that uh, smart wallet, he's going to have to deploy the smart wallet. But the most likely scenario, he's going to be subsidized, so he has he doesn't need to pay for that. And if he has to pay, he can use any provider um, 
and and he can use his tokens uh, uh, to pay for that uh, deployment. Um, and as I said, he's not uh, bound to any application or sponsor. He can create, for example, his smart wallet with Defiant, but then start using another uh, sponsor with the same address, and that would work. He is not bound to any to the creator of the smart wallet, let's say. Um, and here maybe you can see the problem that he had. Remember that he uh, started using uh, the tokens that he got in his first payment, and he couldn't use them anymore because he ran out of RBTC. Uh, and, it, and the problem would be, can he unlock it with the new address or not? Uh, I'm not going to give you the answer, but if you want, uh, we can discuss that offline or later. Um, and that will be it. Um, as this uh, last slide says, uh, if you are hooked, uh, we are going to create a new meeting for, for you if you are up to it uh, with a more detailed explanation. Uh, but please let me know because it would take uh, hard work and I don't want to do it if you are not interested. Um, last but not least, since I talk about the gas station network, but I haven't got into much detail, I want to give you the differences between gas station network and enveloping, at least the most important ones. Uh, gas station network is a very, very, very expensive solution. So the sponsor needs to spend a lot of gas in order to uh, submit your transaction. Let's say your transaction uh, only costs 21,000 gas. That would be, for example, uh, uh, this, uh, 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 sending value to another person. That the most, the cheapest transaction that you can create. The actual cost that the sponsor uh, had to pay would be maybe uh, 270,000 gas. So you have more than 200 gas uh, of overhead. Um, right now, in the in the last version of uh, Reef Enveloping which is the second iteration that doesn't have much uh, to relate to GSN, the cost is less than half the, than that. It's, I think it right now is in 80,000 uh, gas of overhead, and it's getting lower. Um, so it is a much cheaper solution for the sponsor and, and in the end for the user, right? because if the sponsor is not subsidizing you, you need to pay uh, for the cost. It is in tokens, but it is cost as well. Um, GSN can only be used in GSN capable contracts, so you cannot call any contract. So the contract uh, it has to be a new. For example, if I have uh, our docs, uh, and let's uh, imagine that the token is not upgradable, so uh, the token doesn't know that exists this GSN. So you cannot use uh, uh, enveloping in that token. That is a, a token that you cannot call. And in the case of um, enveloping, brief enveloping, it works with any contract, new, old. It doesn't matter. You can call any contract. Is they don't need to be aware of the existence of this uh, solution. Why? Because we have this smart wallet feature. And also, the, the, the third difference is that GSN, even though you can pay in tokens, you can pay also in, in, in native crypto cryptocurrency if you wanted to, the internal architecture always pays to the sponsor in native cryptocurrency. So it has to have a complex structure to always convert what you pay in native cryptocurrency. So, uh, for example, I know I don't know if you use uh, swap, uh, RSK swap, when you wanted to sell your adopts, but depending on the flow, it gets more expensive or not. In the case of Reef Enveloping, since it always uh, lets only lets you pay in tokens, it doesn't have that uh, complex architecture, and the sponsor gets paid in the token that you negotiated with the sponsor, and it's very much sim uh, much simpler and much uh, cheaper because of that. And those will be the main differences. And as you see, they are great and very important. Um, right now, enveloping the version number one, it is available, I think, right now today, mainnet. Um, we are uh, scheduled to have the second uh, iteration, which is much, much cheaper, uh, maybe at the beginning of uh, next year. Uh, well, thank you very much. And if you have questions, this is the time. Uh, thank you. OK, um, <laughs> let me see if you have any questions. Uh, OK, uh, Julian asks, does the enveloping user relayer hub which contains a registry of all the possible relayers? Yes, that is a coincidence with a gas station network. 
but that is the only responsibility of our relay hub. The relay hub, it only registers the possible relayers. You might want to not use uh, uh, the, our relay hub. You can use another relay hub. You, you don't need to be bound to any relay hub. Uh, but yes, that is a coincidence that we have with Gas Station Network, but that's the only responsibility of our Relay Hub. The Relay Hub of Gas Station Network, it does a lot of things. It keeps balance, and it pays to the to the, to the sponsor, etc. It does a lot of things. Um, then you ask, so the goal of the Smart Wallet is to replace the changes? Yes, exactly. The, the Smart Wallet uh, uh, avoids the need of uh, gas, gas uh, less aware contracts. So they can use message sender uh, as is. If they don't need to uh, be aware of this new way of sending the message sender. Um, how do you trust the relayer of the enveloping? Do they have a stake that can be slashed? Uh, yes, they have a, sta a stake that can be slashed. Um, even though that, that exists, it is very, very difficult to uh, fool uh, the system uh, both ways. Uh, because the the relayer uh, the relayer means the sponsor. Uh, who is saying the relayer because he knows of the subject, um, and it, it is called relayer because the, the, the action of sending the transaction is a relay action. Um, uh, you cannot fool it easily because if, for example, one one thing that could happen is the the most vulnerable uh, individual here is actually the relayer, not the user. Uh, you can fool the relayer by for example, letting him uh, know that you're going to pay a certain amount of tokens, but when you send the transaction, you, uh, in parallel, uh, deplete your account of tokens, so he cannot uh, charge you for the for the tokens that you said you were going to pay. Uh, you can uh, call a contract that is malicious and that depletes your account as well. So there are several ways that you could attack the relayer, though all, all of those are covered because of the smart wallet. The smart wallet has logic that the first thing that it does is uh, pay for the transaction. So you cannot uh, uh, deplete your account before uh, calling uh, the end contract. And the same happens if you put a malicious contract. The, it cannot deplete your account because uh, you already locked the amount of, of tokens. Um, in the case of the relayer being malicious, the, the relay hub uh, has uh, 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 there are events that are recorded and are, are used by the by the penalizer system in order to penalize the relayer if it behaves uh, maliciously. And I think I cover all the questions. I don't know if you have any other questions. Um, I think we don't fully. No. So well, thank you, Raúl. It was a great talk. I will stop recording. Uh, well, if there is no.